Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. Well, it's Friday night and a lot of news broke today. It's September 8th. Um, this is going to depart a little bit from my normal readings where I focus on one subject. I'm going to focus on a group and it's going to mostly center around, center around all these rulings that happened in Georgia and information that came out of Georgia about who they didn't indict. And then we'll get a special Rudy Giuliani bonus at the end because he's related to it as well. So <laughs> thank you guys for supporting my channel and all the likes and comments and shares that you do. That helps to feed the YouTube algorithm beast and help my video get out to uh, new viewers. And if you're a new viewer to this channel and this, this video reaches you, hey, welcome to the channel. Uh, subscribe and leave comments and join the party. <laughs> it's a fun time. All right, this is gonna end on a snarky note. I'm not gonna start on a snarky note, but I'll end it on the snarky note. Um, and that's gonna do with Rudy Giuliani and the fundraisers with Trump, because I had this evil thought of, my God, what if they raise money for Rudy and then they don't give it to him? Because <laughs> he would do that, wouldn't he? All right, so Mark Meadows. Let's start with Mark Meadows first. Uh, judge ruled that Mark Meadows' case is not going to federal court. It's going to stay in state court. And I believe uh, in my readings, I've that's what I was seeing happening. So got, got that one right. But let's find out. How's Mark Meadows feeling right now? Or how is the case against Mark Meadows going to go right now, now that he's been told it's going in state court? Entertainment purposes only. <coughs> um... <laughs> This could be, you know, yeah, you have to do a lot of fundraising when you're when you're doing that, but that's not what I get with this. This was his big gambit. This was his way to get this thing tossed out. And I suspect what that Ace of Pentacles is going to be is whatever information he hasn't turned over, he's turning over now because now the jig is up. Now it's just a matter of how much can you minimize the damage uh, to yourself. Cross with the Ace of Cups. Wow, pair of aces. Yeah, he's he's upset. He he's, he's upset and he's scared because this was going to be his ticket out, <coughs> and his ticket out just got removed from him. And now, yeah, strength card. Uh, now he's got to give up. You know, he's got to swallow the bitter pill and barf out all the information that Fonnie Willis wants. You know, here, kitty, kitty, you've been a naughty kitty. Here's your medicine. And now start spilling the beans. Expect Mark Expect Mark Meadows is going to spill the beans on this. In the past, Queen of Cups, you know, he's opened up the information. Uh, and then he, then he put a cap on it. And I don't know if this is when he thought that this is going to be his plan. He didn't share anymore. There were thoughts that he was cooperating and that maybe he was secretly cooperating. Who knows? But he has shared information and then he put a stop to it. Maybe he thought he shared enough to implicate a bunch of other people and save his butt. But that didn't work. And maybe this has been a secret plan of his all along. Current situation is Page of Pentacles. It's time to pony up. Pony up the information on the stolen election. Uh, for new viewers, <clears throat> this card comes up a lot in my readings with the election interference. And normally with Page of Pentacles, I would say it's somebody offering up information, things of value. But this could also, this also doubles for me as election interference. So offering up information, big information on the election interference. More pages. Um, yeah, the, he's got to take action now. This is, you know, this, he's going to, he is now going to start doing, pages are young, so it's kind of foolish that he's doing it now. If it was Kings, it would have been better because he would have been in charge of all this. Probably would have gotten himself a sweet immunity deal, but he didn't go that route. Probably wanted a political career after all this was said and done. But now it's really a choice of prison time and how much prison time. So you better start spilling the beans and doing what they tell you to do. Answering the questions that they want. All new uh, for him. The, the lesson to be learned from this overarching energy is the sun. Yeah, he's gonna, he's spilling the beans. He's telling the truth. He's shining a light on everything that happened on there. He's going to talk. Because it's winner takes all at this point, baby. 
This this is for all the marbles. The, uh, the Rico case, <clears throat> excuse me, the Rico case is a conspiracy case. So, you know, what one person does impacts everybody on the case. So now it's uh, how much information can you give so that you minimize uh, the damage on that Rico case. And Mark Meadows has a lot of information to give because he was right there with Trump. Now, if he had an ounce of morals and ethics, he never would have done it. <clears throat> Next best thing is inform you know, the FBI when you're doing it. Next best thing is uh, going to the uh, law officials and saying, hey, here's what I did, but let me, <laughs> let me work out a deal with you. He's way far down the list. He, he basically allowed himself to get indicted, arrested, and he tried his last legal, his last best legal maneuver to get out of doing uh, prison time. He, he, when I threw the cards on this before, he felt, and what I read is if he got that to federal court, he was really gonna get uh, a much better deal for himself. And now that door is shut. <clears throat> Trump is talking about uh, doing the same thing, uh, but Mark Meadows was generally considered to be the one person who had the best shot at it. Uh, Cheeseboro and others are going to try it too, but likely if Meadows can't get it, none of those other ones can. And for Trump, again, it's all about delay, delay, delay. Okay, so Meadows is host. Um, now, one of the... Uh, <sighs> Lindsey Graham, Miss Lindsey. Miss, Miss Lindsay. Again, entertainment purposes only. I guess he cried enough that uh, several uh, jurors felt that they didn't want to indict him. I think it was like 16 to 7. Um, but he apparently is not going to be indicted in this case. And I want to find out kind of what's what's the energy around that. Why did, why did they choose not to indict him even though two-thirds of the folks... Uh, on the jury wanted him indicted. Some of the articles I was reading or was basically the, <coughs> the message was pick your battle. Let's see if that comes up in here or if there's something else going on. Four Swords. Um, <clears throat> he may not be indicted on this, but there might be some other things coming for him. Um... Four stars. This is contemplation. This is, you know, thinking about it, taking a step back and thinking about things, you know, um, and the, the, uh, the stained glass is, you know, it's about ideas, enlightenment and stuff like that. <laughs> Cross with the, uh, the ace of caliprods, the ace of wands. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, wow. And the Ten of Coins underneath it. Okay, so here's what's going on. I think those stories are right. This is the DA really thinking about, okay, what do I need to do to get this case won? And what actions do I take in order to win it? Now, part of the problem is you are limited in your budget when you're the DA. Now, mind you, it's the state of Georgia. So there's money there, but it is a state agency. The other problem that's been brought up is that Lindsey Graham is a sitting senator. So he's going to have some money and he's going to have some power. And, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a harder case. Uh, David Perdue and uh, Miss Loeffler, I believe the last name was, um, you know, they're she's a billionaire and he's a multimillionaire. So they also have a lot of money with which to fight these cases. And ultimately, you know, legacy wise, it's going to be hard to get a sitting senator uh, convicted. Plus, I think Fonnie Willis wants to win this case and putting these people in here in the conspiracy, while probably what's needed for justice isn't going to help her case, it's going to bog it down. And, you know, they may get some victories that uh, can be uh, used as momentum for the other members of the case. So you get some of these wealthy, powerful people out of there and the case simplifies. Is that the way the law should work? No, 
but it's the reality we're dealing with right now. Besides, I think generally speaking, while we might think of uh, Lindsey Graham is, uh, as uh, David Perdue and Miss Loeffler as being, you know, fairly miserable or wretched people, you know, they're, they're small potatoes, go, go play with your yacht somewhere, we just don't ever darken our doorway again. With Lindsey Graham, I think generally speaking, my, audi- my audience is sympathetic to him. Uh, just watching this guy twist himself into a pretzel for Donald Trump. It's how humiliating. I'm embarrassed for him every time I see him do that. And I would just like Lindsay to be happy. I don't want him in the Senate anymore because he can't be trusted. But I, I want him out of the Senate. I just want him to be happy. Go live whatever life it is that you want to live that you're that they're blackmailing you or shaming you against in your current situation. Um in the past is the emperor card um <clears throat> again you've got a sitting senator here and he's on uh the intel i think the senate intelligence committee he might be on the judiciary as well no he's he's a powerful man in powerful positions <clears throat> he should be held accountable but this case even though he was helping <sighs> There's bigger fish to fry. You need to put your resources where they need to go. She's trusting her intuition on this one. She knows she knows she can win the fight against him. Don't get me wrong. She knows she can win that fight against him. But it, she, given her resources and what the real prize is, she's going to let this one go. Lindsay's got enough problems that he has to deal with. Um, so she was just using her, her gut. She was using her wisdom and understands her best bet to get this case going is the way it's going. Don't begrudge her for this one. We can't get everyone, but we want to get the main ones. Here's my Wheel of Fortune card. You know, if Lindsay's is if Lindsay's criming all the time, committing felonies, he'll get caught. He'll get caught in his own time with the own stuff that he's going on. And what might end up happening with Lindsay anyways is that uh, as Trump goes down, Whatever compromise he has on Lindsey Graham, he's going to release it because Lindsey, <laughs> you think about this, Trump is like three and his little buddy, Lindsey, you know, they both had their hands in the cookie jar, but Donald Trump is going to be the one who's going to be put in the timeout circle and Lindsey's not. So what's Donald going to do? He's going to scream out how unfair it is and Lindsey did it too. And by the way, here's all the other stuff. Donald Trump is a tattletaler extraordinaire he is the he is the the 70 plus version of a tattletaler and he's going to tattle on Lindsay when the time comes <clears throat> wow all these major arcana bap, 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 bap. overarching energy or the lesson to be learned from the overarching energy and the current situation is the empress Fonnie willis she's looking out for the country george's best interest in the country's best interest Best to get the one she can convict and get the the leaders, the Mark Meadows and the Donald Trumps of it. If you have to let a Lindsey Graham go and a David Perdue go, fine. If they're committing crimes, there's other ways to get them because there's going to be a lot. I imagine there's so much information on there. You can't imagine that she doesn't have dirt on other felonies that these people have done. They just don't need to be in this RICO case. The outcome is the four of wands, you know, bye, Lindsay, you know, bye, Mr. Purdue, bye, Miss Loeffler. We'll see you later, but we'll welcome you back when when the time comes. We'll welcome you back. Yeah, she's, getting, she's moving on with her case. <coughs> and again, you, it's hard to fight the money. It's hard to fight the legacies and all that. Um, yeah. Lindsay, Lindsay will have his Waterloo, as it were. He's going to have his moments. He's not getting off scot-free on this one. He may not go to prison. (laughs) Maybe he'd like to. I don't know. Who am I to judge? Uh, Not much alcohol in prison. I imagine the same thing that uh, Rudy Giuliani... uh, I'm sorry, entertainment purposes only, but you know what? When you get on... (laughs) interviews on the radio and on television and you're sloppy drunk it's pretty obvious and when your defense is i was drunk at the time dude for rudy 
Rudy Kaludi. Okay. So we've covered Meadows. We've covered Lindsay. We've mildly covered other senators that we really don't care too much anymore. We just want them to go away, maybe be fined, and then go away. Now, Rude, now Rudy Giuliani, he is filing an appeal to his uh, <coughs> a, a motion to basically get his, uh, his uh, arrest or his indictment uh, overturned. Because as he puts it, you know, uh, there, there were errors in the indictment. It's double jeopardy. Fonnie Willis doesn't know what she's doing. So, you know, he's trying to get he's trying to get out of it. I, I don't have a real strong vibe that he's going to get this thing overturned. But, hey, you know, let's ask, shall we? I think it's comical. To be honest, I think it's really comical. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, Georgia hired an expert in RICO. As it, that that news came out like a year, eighteen months ago. So, yeah, maybe Fonnie Willis doesn't know Rico law back and forth, but the expert they hired did, and I'm sure they consulted him on this. So, how's Rudy's case in Georgia going to go? Is he going to be able to get out of this? Okay, <clears throat> I think we're back to uh, Fonnie Willis um, doing what was best for Georgia and making sure that her case was, you know, tight and the guilty would be held accountable and those lesser guilt you can let them go for now because we want to get the, the big fish and rudy of the 40 39 people that they uh the original grand jury said they want indicted you were one of the lucky 19 to actually get an indictment <sighs> crossed by the ten of cups wishes and dreams fulfilled um i think she's going to get her wishes and dreams fulfilled which means that rudy's not going to get out of this let's see in the past We've got the Nine of Wands. Um, she's actually, she is really Rudy's nemesis here. Oh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. You're battling the Empress and the Star <laughs> and the Ten of Cups. I, I, you don't stand much of a chance here, my friend. Um, she did a lot of work on this one. Rudy's kind of in a beleaguered state right now. You know, he's, he, he just, the hits keep coming. He's a run out of cash. He just pled guilty to the de or play, you know, he just didn't even defend himself against the no contest against the um, defamation cases, and <clears throat> Ruby and Shay, I believe their names are Ruby Freeman and Shay. Um, they just asked the judge for another hundred thousand dollars because of discovery that Rudy made him go through. So they already got like ninety thousand dollars for attorney fees, and then because Rudy did stuff that caused more discovery, that added like another hundred thousand dollars to attorney fees, and so they're asking the judge to have Rudy pay for that as well. So, you know, again, the, the money hits keep coming for Rudy. Rudy knows he's dead to rights here. So he's trying to pull out all the stops because he he knows he's done. He, he's not going to get out of this. He doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the resources. And she's got, she's got the info on it. Yeah, the government... The government is is over this. You know, basically, Georgia, you know, the Georgia's district attorney, Georgia law, Rudy's, you know, he, he's suspended from practicing law in places. Um, he was a district attorney, and now he's, he, now he's basically a criminal. Maybe he was a criminal back then, too, for entertainment purposes only. But he at least presented as being on the right side of the government. He's not anymore. It's possible, you know, this this pleading that he's coming through saying he's trying to get this uh, indictment removed. You know, this is just this is just efforts on his part to to muddy the waters or delay things. I don't know what the delaying is doing him. Actually, it's not really a delay. This is Rudy just. Um, trying to stay relevant and trying to get through on a loophole. It's not going to work. And then he has to go out and ask for money because, you know, he can't afford his legal bills, which is going to segue into the next reading. Yeah, he's... Rudy's looking at time. Rudy is looking at prison time for his role in this RICO case, and he knows it. And he's not out of the woods yet because he has other cases he has to deal with as well. He's, he's wanting somebody to come in and rescue him. But nobody's going to rescue him. He is 
I say on his own, but he's looking for a hero to come in. And that hero doesn't exist, near as I can tell. <clears throat> but maybe his hero is Donald Trump. Now, his son, Andrew, uh, helped organize a fundraiser at Trump's New Jersey Golf Club, uh, Bedminster, on Thursday. Uh, and it was $100,000 a plate. And Trump said he would do two fundraisers to help Rudy. So they were hoping that it would raise like a million dollars or something like that from uh, high dollar donors. But uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't it, isn't it sad when a million dollars isn't going to pay your legal bills? Maybe you should have, you know, as somebody who was a brilliant Rico guy and all that, maybe you should have thought about that. Do you remember when he, Rudy was upset that Trump wouldn't make him his lawyer? And he really wanted in there? And he begged and pleaded and finally got in there? Talk about the worst decision you could have made. You know, Rudy could, might have still had his reputation and his wealth. And he could be drinking and have all the, all the ladies he wanted. Oh, sorry. I know some of you are watching this while drinking your morning coffee and you might have just, might have just thrown up in your mouth a little bit with that one. <laughs> My bad. I sh should put up a... <laughs> I should edit that out. Because I don't do editing. Okay. So, my question. <laughs> um, couldn't you picture a scenario where Donald Trump raises, like, a million dollars or something like that at this hundred thousand dollar a plate thing and then not give the money to rudy because he keeps it for himself i mean that seems right so my question will donald actually give the money to rudy that he's promised rudy or is he going to pocket the cash some if not all of it well here's the party everybody come in come into the party you know, I guess if it's a million dollars, they invite at least 10 people to this thing. <coughs> Come on in. We're having a party to help Rudy. And bring your money with you. Because we got to help Rudy. What's underneath it all? The Ace of Cattle prods. <laughs> I'm going to put this one just... This could be, you know, Donald Trump taking a big action to help Rudy out. On the real high end. That, you know, high energy. When was the last time Donald Trump did anything to help anybody else with no strings attached? Yeah, the answer is that's never happened. <laughs> so, either Rudy owes him a favor or the other thing I want to throw out there, and again, um, the uh, inaugural fund. The story that comes from the inaugural fund in 2016 after they raised millions and millions and millions of dollars was the money that they didn't spend they had to give back trump almost blew it blew trump's mind and he's like what do you mean you have to give it back it's mine and it was explained to him no it's not yours it belongs to the you know it belongs to this fund and you have to give it back he never gave it back so if you raise a bunch of money and it's successful donald wants his part on it i you know I had the party at my place. I paid the cooks. I did all the hosting and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. There he is. There's Donald the host. Now all his guests, their guests are coming to see Donald. Yes, the money's supposed to go to Rudy, but the guests are there to see Donald. Oh, God. Knight of Cups is the false friend, the false knight. This could be Rudy coming in saying, hey, 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 I need some money here. I really need some money. Well, I'll have a bunch of people come over to my place. I'll have a big fundraiser. It'll be good. Thank you, Donald. And this could be Donald saying, oh, my God. You know, we raised more money than I was expecting. Rudy doesn't need all that. I need all that. Yep. <laughs> the There's going to be some mystery accounting here. Um Maybe it's one of those things that they're charging $100,000 a plate and then 50 people show up and he gives Rudy $1 million of the $5 million raised or something like that. And Rudy thought he was going to get all of it. But I think there's going to be um, 
expenses. You know, yeah, we raised a million dollars, but you know, we had to pay for the core. We had to pay for the uh, the room and 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 the for the food and the and the alcohol. And they drank more alcohol than we were expecting. And yada yada. He'll nickel and dime them. <laughs> Um, the lesson to be learned is the you know the strength and mastery of it all. Um, Donald Trump just can't let a buck go. He he likes money more than he likes friends, and you know <laughs> trying to get the money from him is literally going to be like pulling teeth. This is going to be one of those things. Um, wouldn't it be funny if they charge you know? If Rudy Giuliani put up like a hundred thousand dollars to pay for everything like that, and then Trump was going to give him the proceeds, and then like any subcontractor, Trump, st Trump stiffs him. And now, not only is Rudy not going to get the million he was promised, he's also out a hundred thousand bucks. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trust Trump for a second. And then you know, Rudy's going to go on his way. He's going to go looking for Trump. Like, where's my money? And Trump's going to be like, get out of here. It's my money. He'll give him a he'll give him a fraction of what he promised him. And when he gives him that fraction of what he promised him, he'll think he's doing Rudy the biggest favor in the world. <laughs> God. Don't trust this man. Why would you trust him? Ever? Now I could be wrong. Maybe he maybe he gives Rudy the money. But you know what? <laughs> Not that I'm never wrong. This is Trump we're talking about. This is Trump and money. Do you really think he's going to give Rudy all the money? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all are smarter than that. But I guess, you know, Rudy and company are desperate. And desperate times make for desperate measures. And maybe he thought he could trust Trump. No. No, he's going to keep the money for himself. I cannot wait to see the story come out about uh, <laughs> when, like, judgments come against Rudy and some the judge is gonna say, well, didn't Donald Trump, you know, have a fundraiser for you and raise a million dollars? He's gonna say, I never got paid. I guarantee you, he will never get paid his money on this one. <laughs> that I feel really confident in. That doesn't even take an intuitive, does it? That just takes somebody with an iota of common sense. Okay, I think I've covered about everything here that I wanted to cover. Um, thank you for uh, the mild change in format. Uh, but, you know, they're all pretty related to Georgia. Big election news on Friday night. I'm going to have this one posted up so you can see it on Saturday morning. All right, everyone. You have a good night, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.